What's going on, folks? How's everybody doing? Hello, hello, all right. So today's gonna be uh, challenging, as always, interesting, challenging. Uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna start out by, I got some watercolors right here. But uh, I think I'm gonna start out without drawing anything. We're just gonna do like small figure studies and I'll probably use, end up using the backside too, just playing around. Um, so if you check out my reference photo here, I got a lot of different little photos of people and these are all from trip I took back uh, two years ago now, this month. I went to like Paris and England and stuff and these are kind of just some photos of uh, people on the street and everything. So, um, I figured I use some of these, so I'm going to be using some of these to draw some figures and stuff, uh, or to paint some figures. What's going on, Philip, Enrique, everybody, Amanda, Sarah, Nolan, Matthias, what's happening? Yeah, two years since the uh, Paris and Europe trip, since the vlogs. That's when I really kind of started vlogging my plane air adventures and stuff. That's kind of when it started. Um, I did like, I think I did like 12 or 13 plein air adventures in oil, but those were like way a few years ago in 2015 and then kind of took a break from those and then I really started vlogging once I got a, a camera that I really enjoyed for vlogging that was smaller and compact. I started doing that in 2018 in the summer, like July, I think. And I've uh, been doing that ever since, so, so check it out. Um, I'm gonna try to see if I can just do some without sketching anything first. And they're gonna be awful, folks. They're gonna be, <laughs> these are gonna be terrible in the beginning, but I think we just, it's something we have to just get through here. We have to get through the pain a bit. Uh, hopefully the ones toward the end of this stream will be better. So I'm just mixing up just random color here. I had some transparent red oxide, some ivory black, just kind of mixing up a warm, dark, um, and that's probably a little too watery, to be honest, than I want. So try to just get more pigment, less water. Um, why do I use ivory black? You know, I get that question a lot, and uh, it's convenience, you know. Yeah, I could use ultramarine blue, but I'm kind of running low on that color. So <laughs> I'm not really using that right now. Uh, I just ordered some paint the other day, so I'm trying to save that a bit. But I can get the same thing pretty much if I do transparent red oxide and then black. It gives me like this warm, earthy black. So I guess we'll just start at the top here. We'll see. <laughs> Let's see what I can do. Um, you know, these are just practice little practice figures. Looks like my my uh, paintbrush is going crazy here. Got some crazy hairs. I have to fix that. I have to cut those off or something. Um, but anyway, so we'll try to just go with. Uh, let me find someone here that's kind of just kind of neutral, I guess, kind of standing towards us, just flat, straight towards us. That's kind of the default view, right? That people will go with. When you draw something, paint something. So that's pretty dark. Um, how's everybody doing, man? Everybody says hello, but nothing else. What's going on? What's happening? What's, what's everybody have planned for this weekend? You know, I, I plan to like go out and do some hiking, but uh, my whole state is on fire. So, uh, <laughs> and it's smoky like is ever it's ever been out here. So. I'm kind of like wondering what I should do, try to find somewhere where it's not smoky. Um, so these are going to be, you know, I'm trying to make these loose and, and what I've seen other watercolors do is like, it's better, it's better to not just over describe things, you know, if you can keep things pretty loose, so like, 
Yeah, that's almost too much for the arm there. Usually the legs, like they usually don't draw the feet or anything. It's usually you just keep it, keep it pretty, pretty loose like this. You know, it's kind of a cool, uh, cool figure there, I guess. You know, I, I might try to put in, let's see, like, on some of them, let's see, like, what happens when I do put in feet, you know? Like, I kind of like how that looks, though. It's, it's kind of energetic. It has, like, some, I got some dry brushing strokes here. I can kind of kill some of that if it's too much. But it's pretty cool. That looks pretty cool. You know, his feet are technically, see, I don't want to put the feet in because it's just like, eh, it looks like it's too much. Yeah, I'm sure it's crazy where you are, Philip. I mean, you got some fires. I was I was just reading. I've been reading a lot that one of the state parks down there, the Redwood, um, the Redwood State Park, just completely burned up. Uh, Big Basin Red, Redwood Park. I've never been there. I've, I've wanted to go there. It's been on my list, but completely burned up. So when that place opens back up, I think I do want to go there and paint like everything burnt. Because that would be a different kind of painting that I've never really done, you know, just have everything, like, burnt. It'd be interesting to document, at least. You know, it's not exactly the happiest thing to paint, you know, but it's it's something different. Um, I really like the dry brush. Yeah, the dry brush is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's kind of like sad to say like everything, but the trees, I mean, they've gone through plenty of fires, you know. There's some crazy photos of uh, one of the trees. The middle of the tree is just, it looks like Lord of the Rings, like Mordor, you know, like it's just burnt, like orange glowing from fire. But it's all hollowed out, man. It's been they've been there for hundreds and hundreds of years for uh going through a lot of uh you know, they've gone through a lot of fires, you know. People were afraid are afraid that like the the old growth is gonna be destroyed or whatever, but I I don't think that's the case. Uh I mean maybe some of the trees might die, but that always happens, you know, the trees fall over in storms all the time. It just you know. But I think they're resilient. I mean, they have fire resistant bark and stuff. So. But yeah, it would, it would be cool to capture something like that, just kind of document stuff. Uh, I'm gonna try to do like some different colors just to see. Let's let's put some feet on this one, see what happens. See, it just looks stupid, man. You can't do it. It's, yeah, it looked better without it. See, this just look. I mean, it just looks cool. That looks like a guy. It's pretty. This one was more of a woman, but I have to have like hair, and I need some different colors and stuff. I'm gonna try some different colors and just try to like. Uh, usually, you keep the shirt pretty soft, like blending down into the. Uh, let's soften some of this. I'll just um, usually you keep the shirt pretty like soft, bleeding into the shorts and everything. So. Let's try to practice with that. Let's see some other uh, figures here that I have. Um, yeah, let's just, uh, all right. So there's a guy that has like a blue shirt on. Let's do that. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Any color will do. But he has lighter like pink pants. So let's see what I can and this is kind of looking down. This is like way above the figure looking down. It's kind of watery. Uh, I think we need it a little bit drier. It doesn't matter. Let's let's go with it. Because I do want to make this bleed a little bit. So there's a shirt. 
And then his pants are like, let's just make them red, I guess. And his pants like this. Looking at like behind him. He's got his arm bent, but that looks kind of weird. I don't like that. Let's see. Yeah. So it look like anything. I'm getting somewhere with this. So it's kind of cool, see it like the, having, having the soft edges there. Everything blends together. I think that really, really helps. I'm just, I'm playing around with stuff here, folks. I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm just trying to see, like, can I soften some of the edges? What's going to happen if I bleed some things out or what, you know. Do you have a smaller brush? No, I don't want to use it. Well, maybe I'll, I'll draw them bigger. How about that? Um, yeah, I'm trying to just paint the shapes with this. You know, I could I could draw them first, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm just trying to like, I'm just, I'm just going for it right now. I'm just trying to see like, okay, what happens if I just try to paint them first? Um, okay, so this guy here, Standing, that's a good one. Let's try to do that one. He's got like a lighter shirt on. So I'll try to I'll try to I'll try to do this a little bit bigger. Then if somebody says I need to use a smaller brush, well, why don't I just paint them bigger? Makes more sense, right? So there's a shirt. Yeah, I don't want to get too detailed. I don't want to fuss with it too much. I just want to get it down there. And then... Got like darker pants on. See, I want these to I want this to bleed together a bit. And then his arms and stuff. If I can get the skin color real quick. Oh, it's pretty dark. It's pretty dark for skin color. Uh, we'll just do like yellow ochre. Just something different. Oh, that's not the right shape that I wanted, but okay. Just roll with it. Trying to get him like he's he's looking down like it's something he's holding here, his phone or whatever. Doesn't really matter. I wouldn't really put that much. You know, the paintings I'm trying to do, like with figures, like they wouldn't be this big anyway. You know, they're gonna be, sm you know, this big and smaller. You know, this small and, and smaller. But um, Uh, I don't know. 
I, I, I think softening the, uh, the pants to the shirt, I think, is nice. Just gives a cool effect. Like, this was just me being stupid and playing around. I didn't really want to soften them that much. I was just seeing what would happen if I did try to soften something. But this, I kind of, it, did, it didn't soften quite how I wanted. Um, you know, I'd want that to be darker. Yeah, just wasn't wasn't wet enough or something. Didn't didn't uh, bleed the way I wanted. But now it just looks like his legs are bleeding or something because of the color, the red color I chose. But that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to practice. So I'll zoom this out a little bit. I mean, they do look like figures and stuff. His arms a little too fat here. Like I would try to. Just obliterate that or something, because that's just, it's not working. Um, but you gotta remember, this would be in an environment, this would be a lot smaller. Um, okay, that's a cool idea. <laughs> Since you mentioned it, like, there we go. We put a, there you go. Now he's holding the phone with the big antenna. <laughs> Yeah, Nathan, I have heard of him. I, I watched a few of his videos recently. Um, I've been watching a lot of, uh, I have a lot of DVDs of um, uh, Alvaro Cast Castanet, Castagnet, and um, uh, Joseph Sabukvich. Joseph Sabukvich. So those two, I have a lot of their stuff. And between both of them, one is really loose and very focused on like expression and emotion. And the other one's a little bit tighter, very, a little bit technical, but also loose as well. So like, I kind of, you kind of get the best of both worlds watching both of them. So I'm kind of, I, that's where I learn a lot of, uh, I just recently started watching them again this week, but I watched, the last time I watched them, it was like January or something. You know, I was getting really, uh, I was getting very inspired and stuff. And then I, I recently remembered, I was like, why am I not, why, why haven't I watched them at all? <laughs> recently but yeah th their work is uh really good um yeah so far i'm doing pretty well so let's keep going here what other kind of figures here could i do okay there's like a business guy there let's try to let's try to do like let's see what this might look like Let's use Thalo Blue, because I, I never use Thalo Blue, so I might as well use it now. Just because. Because it's an ugly color. Um, let's just see what happens. We'll make this guy a politician, so we'll give him like ugly blue. Ugly blue thing. It's gonna look pretty dark on the screen though. So let's see. It's got like a suit jacket. And then his pants are a bit darker. Although they have a, sh they have a shadow. They're not darker, darker, but they have a shadow here. And he's stepping. This. Uh, looks a little weird. Looks like his legs are too small or something, too thin. But let's just keep going, let's keep going. Let's see what, see what I can come up with here. You know, this is how you learn. You got to figure out what's working, what's not. You know, so we'll we'll see if this uh, if I can make this look like something. Can't even see it. 
hands or anything. A little bit there. Really looking at the back of him. I think I made a. You know, his jacket gives him these weird proportions, but I think his legs are too short. Yeah, his leg see, comes down like this. Oh well, not the best one there so far, but it's okay. Uh, just keep practicing here. Give him some dark hair, even though he doesn't have dark hair. He looks somewhat human. But it makes sense for a politician, right? Somewhat human. <laughs> I think his arms are a little, I think it should have made him lower. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what it is. His arms should be a little bit lower. Down here, and then this one's kind of okay, but something like that. Yeah, good point, uh, Nathan. We'll give him some, some horns sticking out there. <laughs> some crazy looking horns. But <laughs> oh man, he already looks like he has hooves anyway, so might as well. Yeah, the, le the legs is the main thing. Like, some of them, they look cool. And then some of them, I got to get the walking. I, th I think that's what I really need to practice. So, I think the walking. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to make this one interesting for you guys. So, hopefully, uh, the replay will be nice. But, yeah, I mean, these are, I mean, they look, I, I haven't, I, you know, I started out pretty strong. But the walking, I got to get this is just a really weird angle. You're looking at him from like a back kind of 45 to three quarters angle. So he's just, you're getting a really weird perspective. And then he has this oversized jacket on. You know, he doesn't know how to dress. And then, and you're, he's getting a weird, you know, you can barely see his other leg. And then it's coming out in front of it. Let's put his shoes in there. Maybe that'll help it. I don't know. So this, and then like. Yeah, that kind of helps actually having the shoes. And he would actually have. That's something I need to practice too, because these figures aren't going to be floating. They're going to. They're going to have like. Some kind of shadowing, right? So that kind of anchors them to the ground there. Now this one next, you know, this guy here. What? It, where was his shadow? Oh, he has a very small shadow. See, I'm not even sure. How do you? Just something like that. Um, you get creative with these, you know. Just different kinds of shadows, I don't know. Just playing around. Just playing around here, folks. Just trying to see what works, what doesn't work, what helps, what doesn't help. You know, this would all be shadow, I guess. But Yeah, that one actually came out not too bad, actually. Once I put the feet in there, I think it just needed a little bit more. Um, or maybe I'm just not being loose enough, you know? Um, yeah, the dry brushing really, that's what, from what I've heard, that's what people do the dry brushing for. It, like, gives a bit of uh, movement to them, if they're, especially if they're walking. But... Um, Okay, uh, who else, who else? Let's see. Okay, we got a guy with his arms out and he's, uh, it's a really bad walking stance though. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I want a guy that's like walking. Huh. Okay, there's a woman walking, but uh, she's kind of up from above. She has the weird legs too. All right, let's do this other guy. Let's do this other guy. Might as well just do all of them anyway. I don't know why I'm 
sitting here being picky. I need to just do them all. So this guy's wearing some dark stuff. Kind of gray. something like that, his arms slightly off. His pants are a bit darker. Let's see if we can do. But he kind of has some, so one of his legs is straight and his other leg is bent, so he's like in the middle of walking. So I'm going to see if I can try to catch that loosely here. So this leg's coming down and then it's, it's bent like that and this leg is slightly bent. Like this. I think I always make the, the the body like too thick at the top. I think that's my problem. Or I make the legs too little. Too see this should have been coming out forward more. Maybe that's what would have would have given it some more action. Oh sorry guys. There we go. Um just kind of down like that. His head is just straight forward like that. With some dark hair. Too big of a head. Head too big. Okay. So I gotta pay attention to that kind of stuff. I think his leg legs were too short. I think his legs were too short. I think that's the problem with that. Like his should have gone down further and then out. All right, maybe I'm gonna try to zoom in on that guy. Let's see if I can do that again, maybe, but better. Um. Oh, that's cool, Sarah. Um, yeah, that's the kind of I use uh, right here. Yeah, they're pretty good from what I've seen. Um, I mean, they get the job done. You know, you can do a lot of good paintings with them. So, yeah. Yeah, he looks mad because his fist is like balled up or something. And his posture. But not really. He's actually... Forgive him. You're just looking at him from a weird angle. See, his shirt should have been way up there. Okay, so proportions were off on that one. Let's try them again. I'm going to try one more time. Because what's better than just trying to practice? Let's see. So I want to get the gesture of his shoulders. I want to make sure I get these angles. So to make him a bit slimmer this time and really come in down to his waist a bit. He kind of has like a his long sleeve shirt, but it's rolled up. Okay, that looks pretty good for the body, body portion. So now the tricky part, the legs, that's what I gotta, gotta be careful here. So it looks like his legs are his thigh 
double check real quick if I can. Yeah, it looks like this, his thigh is almost as tall as his his torso. So. Something like that, possibly. Yeah, not enough dry brush there. Kind of just went too too thick on that one or too too wet on that one but I think that looks better than this possibly try to put his arm in there and then his Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, problem is his gesture isn't that great, at least for the feet. Like his the way he's walking and stuff, it's just hard to tell what's going on. And I, I think if if you're doing like small figures and stuff, I, I think you kind of want to. I think I want to avoid something like that where you can't really tell what's going on. You know, is he walking? What's happening? You know, I think you want to be able to tell for sure, like, what's going on. So I wouldn't necessarily put a figure like that in the painting, I don't think. But it's good to just practice that kind of stuff. Um, can you do whole watercolor tutorials? Uh, you can go check out the last, like, 20 live streams. Uh... I've done a lot of just full watercolor paintings, so um, yeah, the walking's definitely you definitely see the walking here and the, like the motion. This guy, he's kind of it's more of a passive. He's in he's in uh, he's about to go in into he's in like mid stance phase. So you're not really seeing the, uh, you know, this guy's in full swing phase. So he's got the full range of motion. You can see, you know, the leg drawn back and the other one forward. That's kind of what you would want for someone walking. And this guy is kind of like, it's more of a passive, like he's standing and he's about to enter the swing phase. So not the clearest for like a figure you want in your painting. But, yeah, something like that. Uh, could could be easier to do these figures with a small brush? I mean, I, I am using a small brush. This is a number 10 round. It's pretty small. I mean, if you guys see the paper I'm using, I mean, this is, this is small stuff. I don't usually paint this small. Um, I mean, what kind of brush would you want me to use? Like, I don't want to use like, you know, I don't want to use like this. It'll take forever, you know. I think you want to you want to be pretty loose. Like, if I was using this small of a brush, you know, I'm going to be, let me sit here all day trying to paint in figures, you know. Like, I'd have to, they'd be really small figures. You see what I mean? Like, they would just be super small if you use a brush that's small. You can only hold so much water in the brush, so much paint, and yeah. So that's why I'm using this larger brush because everything's proportional to the size of the brush you're using, and I'm doing strokes that are pretty, pretty natural for this size brush. Um, and you know they're not coming out that bad. It's not like 
they're not like bad figures. It's just, you know, I just need to dial them down and do a lot of practice. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm showing you guys like sometimes you just have to practice things. And But, um, yeah, this is cotton paper. This is arches. Same paper I always use. Same stuff. I'm not cheaping out on practicing or anything, you know. I want everything to be the same. Uh, someone asked, I'm a beginner. Should I learn watercolor painting or color pencils? Uh, the question you should ask yourself is, which one do you want to do more? Do you want to do watercolor painting or do you want to do color pencils more? Whichever one you want to do more, that's the one you should learn. Like, simple. Yeah, there's no reason to like... Yeah, there's no no question there. I mean, whatever one you want to do more. And if you don't know which one you want to do more, then try a little bit of both and see what you like better. Um, okay, so this guy has an interesting stance. Um, yeah, the arms play a part too. Yeah, his arms, like I was saying, he was in like a mid stance. So his arms were straight down, his legs were straight down. Even though he's walking, it doesn't really show. You don't really get the idea that he was walking. So this guy is, a, is an interesting stance, so I'll try to capture it here. He's got a long shirt on too. But let's not worry about that as much. And then let's give him some... He has like light shorts on but let's just give them like some red shorts something, something that's going to stick out uh, for the sake of this painting of course red makes it look like he's bleeding or something though of course I forgot about that just remember that like I just figured that out a few minutes ago and then I already forgot but And then his body, yellow ochre, cadmium red, or yellow ochre and transparent red oxide. For some skin tones. Pretty watery, I wanna get them a little bit thicker, but. He's got his arm up this way, he's talking to some dude. Yeah, I was going to say for the head size, I probably made that a little too big. The head size is interesting uh, because if you make the head larger than it should be, you turn it from a man like this, like you turn it from like a, what would be a man into a young boy. So the bigger you make the head, the the younger the people become. <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind if, if you're painting. And... Uh, Yeah, or you can try watercolor pencils. There you go. Merge both of them, you know. But I say do what you want because that's what you should learn. You should learn what you want to do. Try a little bit of both. See which one you like better. Maybe you like none of them, you know. Um, so, yeah, just have fun, man. That's the thing. Have fun, play around, see which one you like better. And then... Uh, Shadow is going out in front of him. Try to capture it a bit. Drew this, shouldn't have drew that line there. But oh well. And he actually has a matching hat on, believe that. Of course he does. Not bad, not bad. 
Not bad for my first. I mean, this is I've never really painted watercolor figures before, so I'm pretty happy with how these are coming out, actually. Um, I mean, this is kind of the style I want to do, like just make them pretty loose, because remember, these are going to be in a giant landscape, you know? Like, where's the thing from the other day that I painted? I painted a uh, study the other day. Here we go. See, so... You know, the figures are going to be not this big. They're going to be bigger. They're going to be on this whole page. But, you know, they'll be within the whole landscape. They're very, I don't want to say they're inconsequential, but they're, they're just an element within the whole scene that's telling the story, you know. So they don't have to be perfect, you know. I'm not, I'm not striving for, like, perfect figures here. I'm just, I just want things to look decent you know so that's what I'm striving for for anyone wondering like what am I you know like these don't look realistic these aren't figures like what is this like well my idea of what I'm trying to achieve is different than your idea of what you think figures should be so how about that uh so yeah, once you start adding the lighting and stuff, it gives form to them. Uh, are there watercolor pins too? Uh, I don't know about pins. I don't know about that. Uh, next challenge, do a man on a bicycle. All right, let's do it. I I'll try it without, let's try it without a reference because I don't have a reference of one on a bicycle. So let's see what, like, I have an idea because I saw somebody do one in a painting, so I'm going to just try, I've never tried this before, so this could be awful, but I'm just going to see what happens. So, do you guys want me to zoom in again? Let's see. I'll zoom in a bit. Let's do it up here, I guess. So, a guy on a bike is going to be tilted like this. Let's see, if you're riding a bike, your head's kind of tilted forward too, I guess, right? So, something like that. Your legs. Ooh, you got some big, thick legs. I mean, this guy's been biking forever. His other arm's coming down. Let's see, if you're holding, if you're riding a bike, yeah, that's pretty tough. Let's see. So let's try to like draw some of the bike in here. So he's pedaling. He's pedaling. So if you have one leg up like that, the other one's back. What happens when you pedal on a bike? Gosh, I haven't ridden a bike in so many months. Uh, I'm not even sure what. Oh man, totally ruined the arm there. Let's see, so we've got like handlebars here. I don't want to make it too, too detailed or anything, but something like this. Bikes back here. Bike seat. Pedals and stuff. I'm not sure where his other leg would be, to be honest. Yeah, I'd have to figure that out. Now it looks stupid. Should have made the bike lower. The wheels should be lower. Below his legs. Usually sitting up on a bike. Yeah, I think I got most of the gesture right. I think I just have to, I'd have to really have a reference. Uh, I'd have to practice. That's one I got to really practice for sure. But... Pretty good without a reference, I guess, right? So more of the bike would be here. This would go, doesn't go that far across, right? You have like a, some kind of something like this, comes down. Yeah, I'd, I'd legitly need a reference for that because I'm I'd, I'd never really practiced drawing people on bikes, so. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. 
That one is unfortunate, but I tried. I, I gave it a shot. You, you challenged me and I gave it a shot. So what can I say? Let's draw some, we can draw some cool shadows though. Try to make it look a little more realistic. How about that? There we go. Massive shadow. There we go. Coming towards us. I messed up with that line there. Shouldn't be a line for a shadow there. Otherwise it'd look a little more realistic. But I didn't realize I was gonna make it come towards us. I was just playing around. But anyway, I'm just messing around there, folks. Um, so yeah, I'd have to, I tried my best on that one, guys. I'd have to practice that one. Um, You found the youth fountain. Yeah, you just make your head bigger, you know. That's all that's all it's about. Just make your head bigger. And you become younger. <laughs> uh where's a guy that's legitly walking? I need like a hmm. All these are like looking from behind or they're coming towards us. I want one that's like from the side. Huh. Alright, there's a few here. Let's see. I mean, this, this is all, just doing my best here, folks, just doing my best. A study on shadows, yeah, that would be interesting. wonder uh, what I could do with that, just kind of doing different directions and different values and stuff, just trying to, two different light sources, things like that. I mean, that could definitely be a whole topic of... So there's a, this one's a woman. She has an interesting top on, so I want to try to see if I can recreate that. I don't know if... Oh, I think I already messed it up. <laughs> I made her huge. Okay, let's start over. Scratch that one. Let's just let's blend that one out. That could be a background for something in the future here. All right, let's start over. Sometimes it's what you have to do. Sometimes you just... Let's start over. Let's see if we can make this. It's like a very, it's like a tank top kind of a thing. So let me zoom that in for you guys. Let's get really close today. Okay, there we go. We're getting close, folks. We're getting close. I wonder where everybody's at. We're missing a few of the uh, normals around here. It's it's all good, though. I think I remember some of them saying they weren't going to be able to make it. So, it's all good. guess people have lives on a Friday night. I don't know why. So there's the interesting top. This is, this is like three quarter view from behind and above. So this is like her shoulder there and her arm. Uh, actually, I think I could just amend that shape just slightly. Too much water there. And then what kind of pants does she have? We'll give her orange. No, nah, we'll give her what kind of what color? Hmm. <laughs> And we'll keep it. We'll just go with like a more of a violety red, I guess, for down below. Shorts are kind of just like that. Not much going on there. Uh, we can 
give her this is from behind, so she mostly just had you can mostly just see her hair. And then her her ugly skin color that I gave her. <laughs> very dirty skin color there, very dark. But so her arms coming down. Looks like she's holding a piece of paper. So it's like a or I'll make it a rag or something. I don't know what she's holding there. It's like a folded map. I don't know why she's holding it with one arm like that down there, but she is. Got the photo of her. She's doing it. Uh, <laughs> and that's what we're doing. We're just painting what we see today. I'm trying to practice. She's got one arm down. I think she just has a bag. She has like a bag here. The strap coming down. I don't know if that's going to show up correctly. Got a bag. So her legs, that's what I'm kind of uh, keeping off here. Let's see if we can do this. These are coming out way better than I thought they would, folks, to be honest. Uh, I thought I was going to, thought these were going to be horrible. But not bad. Really not bad for my first time ever trying this. So I got to make sure I get the length of the legs right. So that seems to be my problem. And you can't even really see her other leg. Her other leg comes out in front and down. this and this leg that's kind of where her knee is and then the bottom like her calf other part comes down like that that's pretty nice there we go definitely got the proportions right on that I think and then I don't know if I can do it but dry brush in like yep couldn't really do it as well as I wanted but that gives the idea, I guess. I'll read the chat in just a second, folks. I know I'm probably missing some questions or something. Just want to focus on getting this uh, pretty dialed in. And we'll give her a little shadow here. That's kind of like what I'm seeing. So if you take a look at that, I mean, if you saw that in a painting, I mean, you'd, you'd understand it's a human, you know? Like, okay, human being, we got it, you know? You have a little bit of shading on there if you want, or, you know, this leg's a little bit darker down here. This is all shadow. Okay, uh, yeah, I don't know why she's holding that thing stupidly like that, but uh, it looks like she's holding something, I guess. Um, I'd like to do charts to study watercolor paints. Any suggestions? Um, that's a good, that's a good question. You know, hmm, I did that with oil paints, so normally what you did what I did was like you pick one color 
you know, I think I made a blog post on that. I'm not 100% sure. Just look up how to how to make color charts. Um, how to how to make how to make color charts for uh, mixing colors and stuff. So what you do? So basically, what you do? I wish I had some of those. I think I got rid of all the color charts that I had that were oil paint. I got rid of those because I don't I don't know why. Didn't really need them anymore. But what you do, is, so say you pick yellow ochre, then you would do yellow ochre, uh, you do yellow ochre and then do like three to five uh, values of it going all the way to white. So lighter and lighter and lighter. And then you would mix yellow ochre with every color on your palette. Um, yellow ochre mixed with red, yellow ochre mixed with orange, yellow ochre mixed with transparent red oxide, yellow ochre mixed with phthalo blue. But what you would do for the whole chart is you would make sure that there's more, you would make sure that yellow ochre is the predominating mix. So there would be more yellow ochre showing through than there would be with transparent red oxide. So for example, let me, I can do this really quickly. So like, we'll do it, um, we'll do it down the side here. So let's say this is your, this is a very small, tiny color chart. But this is how you would do it. You would do like one inch squares or something. So you'd have yellow ochre, and the first color you put down would show you that that's what chart you're doing, right? And then as you went down, you would do lighter and lighter as you went down, right? All the way to, to very, very off white, like very off white of the color, right? So I hope you can see that, I hope that makes sense. So you have yellow ochre and then boom. And then you do the next color on your palette. So you would do yellow ochre mixed with, we'll just say transparent red oxide. But with this mixture, we wanna make sure that there's more yellow ochre. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want a 50-50 mix and you don't want more transparent red oxide. You want yellow more yellow ochre to be in the mix. So this whole chart will be like a yellow ochre chart. So this is yellow ochre mixed with transparent red oxide. And you know, I don't know if that's really what it's supposed to look like. Maybe they might, might be a little bit more brown or something. And then you do the same thing. Now you make the values lighter and lighter as you go down, right? And you do this with every color. I mean, with oil paint, this was a pain to do because it takes so long to mix all these colors. I mean, literally one chart could take like 30 minutes. And then you go all the way down to like off-white again, down here, very off-white of the color. And then you do the same thing, like we'll do one more just so I can demonstrate the difference. So we'll do yellow ochre with, uh, ultramarine violet deep, which is like a purple. So you still want yellow ochre to be the predominating mix. So I'll show you what I'm mixing here, actually, uh, if I can. So I'll start over. So you take like yellow ochre, you can zoom this out a bit, take yellow ochre, and then some ultramarine violet deep. But you want yellow ochre to be the strong you know, basically 75% yellow ochre, 25% ultramarine violet deep, and then boom, now that goes on your chart here. And they're all gonna look very similar because yellow ochre, it's, it's so subtle. Um, it's such a subtle thing. But you can see that it's cooler than the, than the transparent red oxide mix. And and then you'll start to, you'll start learning a lot of things about this. You'll start to see like oh you can actually see more of the temperature when there's more transparency. Um, you know you you learn a lot of different things when you do these these color charts like this. But hopefully this is what you were asking about. You know.
And then you'll have a beautiful harmony of what yellow ochre looks like mixed with the rest of your palette. And then you do the same thing. You make an ultramarine blue. Like for every color of your palette, you make a chart. Hopefully everybody's following me on this. I know this is probably like everybody's like falling asleep now, but you know, you do a, so now when you do like a transparent red oxide chart, you do transparent red oxide here and then you mix it with yellow ochre, but you make 75% transparent red oxide, 25% yellow ochre. So then it makes it easy to look at anything you want to paint and you can say, okay, it's this color right here. How did you mix that color? Well, it's transparent red oxide mixed with yellow ochre with yellow ochre predominating. You know, and it just, it breaks everything down like that. Um, so you'll have, you know, there's videos about how to do this. And I think I have a blog post that I made about it, possibly. I'm not 100% sure if I did. Uh, but I did talk about my color charts that I made and stuff. But yeah, anyway, that's, you know, there's explanations out there of how to do these color charts like that. But if you do like five values and then you just go across and you do it with your whole palette, you'll have this beautiful harmony of all the colors you're able to mix very quickly and easily. Like, so, like if you see a color in a photo or from life, like let's say I wanted to mix this color. Well, I just look at my color charts and go, okay, what's the closest thing to this? And right away you can get the color formula. Like, okay, this is just cobalt teal with yellow ochre, you know, at this value or this, you know, with it is actually more cobalt teal than it is yellow ochre, like, you know, stuff like that. So anyway, we can get back to some of these figures here. So that one came out pretty well. What do you guys think? That one came out pretty well, except for the skin tone, a little bit dark on that, but you know, no big deal. I'm not worried about that. Um, let's see. I wish there was, I wish there was more of an action one somebody walking from the side. That's really what I need. Uh, I need someone walking from the side. But I don't seem to have one. Okay, I have one guy, this is interesting. I have one guy that's wearing a backpack and he's walking. He has, you can really see his stride a bit from behind. So I'm gonna to try to do that. Let's see what this comes out like. Yeah, no, wor no, uh, no worries. Henri, hopefully is helpful. Hopefully everybody else, everybody else is tuning out, but uh, it's all good. I don't need to do videos for a bunch of people. You know, as long as one person is getting some benefit, then it's all good. Yeah, jogger. See, I need, I need, I need some. Fo I gotta look up. I gotta do another one of these um, live streams because I, I need to really prepare some photos, like running, jogging, like, and have specific photos for each one. Like this, I was kind of just doing random. I thought there'd be a lot of different kinds of uh, figures here because there's just so many. You know, when you guys look at the reference photo that I'm using, one more time. You know, there's so many different kinds of different people everywhere, but there's not a lot of them from behind or from like three quarters from behind or something, or they're f straight on. So, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to figure, I'm gonna have to do this again for sure. Cause this is great practice, man. This is, this is pretty awesome. I'm kind of, I'm really happy with how this is coming out. And I think I do need to practice these more, no doubt. So nice shirt there. Let's see if we can put the backpack in right now. Yeah, the cyclist, that's not from a photo. That's just, yeah, I'm glad it came, I mean, it came out somewhat well, but that was just me improvising, so I appreciate it. So this guy has a backpack. So he has like a strap here and then it's coming off of his back. Like this. Boom. And then the straps going up around his waist. 
kind of getting a little too detailed there, but sorry folks. Didn't realize how zoomed out I was. It happens. I gotta be the cameraman too. There's a lot of work here. A lot of work happening. So there's a shadow casting down. He has some shorts on. We'll just give him, I'm just getting like easy colors I can get very quickly. Uh, they're not the prettiest colors, but that's okay. It's real, real life. Most, most things are usually grayed down a lot. Boom, nice pair of shorts there. Now all I need is, is legs. That's the, it's the challenging part. That's what I really need to focus on getting better at. It's like legs and skin tones and the proportions. So some nice dry brushing there. So his leg is sticking out in the front there. This one's actually lower than the front one, so that'll give the idea of some action happening. Of course, you can't really see his arm, you can only see his elbow. His head here. Hmm, maybe his legs need to be slightly longer. Really practicing my loose painting today, that's for sure. This guy's bald, so we'll just give him some character there. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool trying to capture the different kinds of people that are out there, you know? Like, people that wear glasses, people with a beard, people that have hats on, you know. This woman with a bag. Like, there's all kinds of different kind of stuff. I still need to work on those legs. Ugh, it's challenging, man. I think, I think, should have been, huh, not sure, not sure with that one, what's, what's, what the problem is. Don't know if it's the back leg, the front leg, something there. It's weird because he's at like a three quarters angle, so it's hard to, I think it should have been at an angle more like that. Too late now, but, you know, you can just, you can tell when the person's not, it's not sitting. Oh, I think I know what the problem is, folks. So if you look at where his head is, his head should be, this front leg should be out way more from where he was. It's all about the weight, you know, it's getting that weight distribution correct. So I'm gonna try, I think I might try that one again. Cause it's difficult because he's wearing a backpack, but his head is actually between uh, where his feet are. Uh, you know, and, and the way I drew it, it was, I put his head beneath the foot that's going out in front. So it looks like he's off balance. Like he just doesn't look like, um, yeah, it just looks like he's off balance. So you see like this guy looks legit because his head is over that leg, his, his weight bearing leg. This one, it's a little forward. So it kind of looks like he's like slouching over or something. 
and uh, this one captures more of what it should be. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. You know that that weight where the the weight is being distributed and where their head is is really going to show the action. And this one is a uh, not correct and I just now saw that looking at the whole figure rather than isolating all the parts of him I could see that the way I drew it was off the gesture of it is off like his his what should have what it should have been is his shirt actually and leg his shirt and leg actually comes down like this and then straight out from there So I know that looks weird because now it has like three legs, but that's that's the line of like where it probably should have been. But that's okay. I can always try it again or just do a different one. We'll move on to somebody else. How long have I been on here? Hour and 11 minutes. So, well, hopefully this one, I know it's not as interesting as like an actual real painting, but filling up a whole little sheet of these is pretty fun. Just practicing. Just practicing. Uh, okay, that one's interesting. Let's do that one. So this guy's a yellow, bright yellow shirt on. I'm just checking out your brush you're using. Do you? What was your uh, What was your question, Deborah? This is just a round brush, number 10. Synth I think it's, believe it's synthetic. It's not like super expensive brush or anything. You are brave to try this in public. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Like, I just want to show people the reality of so many people, you know, they don't understand what it means to like, how to get better and like you they think like you you try stuff and you're just automatically they think I'm like automatically good at stuff but it's like you have to practice it's all I spend time practicing stuff like this I don't just I'm not just magically better I'm not just magically good when I try it you know there's some times where some of these look good and then some of them look awful you know it's just it's the way it goes and I just want to show the reality of like practice And once people once people actually practice and they start improving and getting better at something, like you you really understand like okay this is how it works like this is what you're supposed to do. Like anybody that spends a little bit of time just practicing, they realize like okay, it's gonna take time. Like it's it takes time. So I want to be careful now. I know this leg comes out to about his arm. And then down at this angle. Oh man, I had a good dry brushing and I ruined it. Something like that. And then his other leg. Uh, I feel like I made it too short again. Gosh, darn it. That's the thing about watercolor. Like once you once you mess up in a painting, like if I was painting these figures in an actual painting, like there's no redo. Like once I do it, you know, that's it. So this is something you really have to, I'd really have to practice like and figure out which kind of figure I would want in my painting and what area and like really make sure I get it, you know, really practice the gesture of it and everything so that it's going to look good in the, the painting. Because I'm not, I'm not too confident with my ability to do these figures, obviously. I mean, you guys can see this. I still need a lot of practice. I mean, I'm doing okay, but, 
You know, it's not like the greatest. It's not the greatest. I'll never be the greatest anyway, but it's not like uh, I could get better at this, you know. I could definitely get better. Could definitely improve. Too much of his arm there is suggested. And his torso is too big. I always make the legs too short. That's what it is. Yeah. I think the legs are just too short because the torso always looks too long. And then I realized, well, it's not that the torso is too long because I drew the torso first. So it's more that didn't go long enough on the didn't go long enough on the legs somehow you know I, I don't know how much longer they would need to be he has a shadow going out in front of him so I'll just put that in I guess you know it's not awful it's not bad but You know, I think that might be my best one. Just with the lighting and everything, that's a pretty good one. That one's good. That one's good. Pretty good. So I got some, you know, a few. One, two, three, four, five, six-ish, seven that are pretty good. Not bad for uh, talking and chatting at the same time and painting these. Do a lady sitting on the ground, knees up. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. I need to do some sitting down. I do have, I think there is some photos here of... There's not a woman, there's a little boy sitting. Um, let's try it. It's an interesting posture, so let's see if I can replicate it. There are some little kids too, so I might try little kids and just see if I can make them look little, like little kids. Yeah, the legs are bent. Like this leg, this leg would be shorter. So this one's probably right. I think I just needed hit this one to be just slightly longer, um, which I kind of did do. But I don't know. There's something about it that just looks a little weird. Maybe I just made it too thick too. It's just small things. It's just small things that I need to like figure out. Um, yeah, I got this. I got this brush, Deborah. That's asking. I got this brush in uh, <laughs> in Hawaii on Maui when I was there back in last August. I can't believe it's already been a year. But I bought this brush while I was there. The only art store in the town was inside of uh, Ace Hardware. Believe it or not, Ace Hardware store had a section for art supplies, and that's the only art supplies they had on like on pretty much the whole island almost, you know, in that area that I was in. So yeah, I got this nice little round brush and it worked really well, man. This was the first really round brush that I started using. Um, so yeah. Uh, I'm starting a bit late in life with art mediums. I'm trying to learn all I can, and you are in my book. One, you are in my book. Wonderful at it. I like that you make mistakes and show us how you can laugh at yourself. Also, yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. I mean, it's never too late in life to do something you enjoy. You know, it's never too late. I understand, like you wish you would have done it earlier, but yeah, you just gotta. All you have is right now, so just roll with it. Have fun. Why is my nose itchy? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. It's like allergies or something. Okay, uh, let's try let's try this little kid sitting down on the ground. So he has a white shirt on, but I'm gonna change it to like a blue shirt because I have blue right here. So let's see if we can see if I can do this. It's almost simpler, but 
<laughs> I say that, but it, it's probably going to be more challenging. So there's his shirt, and then his his pants are pretty dark, so we'll try to get those to be dark. Let's see, they're about right here. He has shorts on. Like that. He actually has a hat on, so I'll just put in a little uh, idea for a hat there. Might as well put his head in too since we just did the hat. There's his head, and then his legs go, okay. Might have made the torso too long again. Gosh darn it. Uh, let's compensate. We'll bring up the shorts a little bit. And then. So his legs go up to here. And they're bent out like that, and then he has some cool shoes on or whatever. Although this kid looks a little bit older than what I sh he should be. I think it's because I made his limbs a little bit longer. It's like his arms resting on us. Oh man, his arms are resting downward. It's tough to see. It's very small. Yeah, not the best. Not the best here. I feel like I want to try that again. But he is kind of sitting on a hill at an angle like that. It's a little light streak behind him. This kid is sitting in front of Westminster Abbey, waiting forever to get inside. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm gonna stay on here a few more minutes. I'm gonna get off here, folks. Uh, let's try to do Little kid. A young girl here. Try to do real quick. Just picking colors at random. So I gotta make sure I get this in proportion. Kind of made her pretty tall, <laughs> actually. Yeah, I think proportion is the biggest thing. Biggest thing I got to work on, because I'm I'm pretty good with the shapes. It seems it's just the uh, it's just the proportions I struggle with. Yeah, I think I think she needs to be. Wider. Um, oh, it sounds good, Deborah. Yeah, I hope I hope it works out well. I'm sure I'm sure the brush will be fine. Um, but yeah, I hope uh, watercolor is a lot of fun, man. It's definitely frustrating. It's def you know you're definitely gonna fail a lot, but I think. I mean, you, you draw a lot, it seems, and you're pretty good at, I mean, really good at, at charcoal and stuff. So I think you'll understand, like, the amount of patience and practice you're going to need and stuff. And, 
you know, that's what I'm talking about when it comes to like practice and stuff. If you already have some practice under your belt and you understand what it takes, then you can pretty much do anything, you know? You can really do anything. Because you realize, like, you know, just takes, all takes practice. Yeah, it doesn't really look like a little girl. I don't, maybe it does. <coughs> ah, excuse me, folks. I think it's just a difficult angle. All these are difficult angles. This is like directly from the side. You can only, you can't see both of her legs. But it feels like I could put in like a leg back here or something like. But yeah. Ah. Uh, not the best. We'll just soften everything, give it a nice wash. Look at that. Cool. Uh, let's paint something over this purple wash since I put it there. I don't know what, but let's see. There's like one or two more figures I can do before I get off of here. Um, so there's somebody sitting down in the grass with like their legs crossed. So let's try that, I guess, real quick. I'm trying to get some thicker paint. Let's get, let's have some fun with this. Sorry folks, trying to get it going here. There we go. Yep, no worries. Uh, yeah, Deborah, it's definitely challenging. I, I like the challenge too. That's why I started doing it and really got into it again because I really I enjoy the challenge. Okay, I really got to be careful here. Let's try this. So there's her shirt. Looks like she's sitting on a cushion or something, but not a big deal. There's her shirt, and she has dark pants on, or shorts, or something. Doesn't really matter. Come on. I'm trying to mix the color here. Okay. And she has dark pants on. Boom. Perfect. Kind of get those to bleed together. Always looks a little bit nicer. With some softness there. And then I'm gonna make this a different color, especially like sitting on some kind of cushion or something. Um, and her hair. His dark hair like this. I think something like that. Face and then Arms are resting out in front of her. Can't really see much more. Looks like the legs need to just come out a slightly bit more. That looks pretty, uh, looks like someone, you know, this is from like the side, obviously, so you're not seeing all of her body, like the whole thing or anything, but. Um, Thank you guys for watching, though, man. This has been a lot of fun. Um,
Yeah, so that's just someone sitting. They're like sitting in the grass. Let's like, let's paint some environment, I guess, around it slightly. Um, real quick, just something real quick. A nice, nice green. So it's pretty cool. See someone just sitting in the shade. They're all in shadow anyway, so that's kind of what it really looks like. But yeah, not not bad, not bad, I guess, guys. I, I, I really see it's it's all about the proportions of the legs compared to you know the head, the torso, the legs. Sometimes adding the feet if necessary. I really like this guy. He's like floating. It's pretty cool. I mean, it doesn't seem necessary to always add feet, but seems sometimes it is helpful so I'm gonna have to play around with that more just be very cautious about that uh, and the lighting the lighting's really important the lighting just shows the form and it kind of helps show which way they're moving which way they're going you know when you have a shadow like that you can really just see like okay that's where he's going you know that's what's happening so pretty darn cool man pretty darn cool Let's see, where was the shadow on this guy? Okay, so not much shadow. So for this guy, there's not much shadow here. It's something like this, very small. But it does give a little bit more context of, you know, the lighting and what's going on there. So it just anchors him to the ground, gives him a little more weight, a little more reality. But, um,. Yeah, guys, I, I, you know, I thought I might be able to do more of these, but uh, maybe I'll save the backside for another live stream. We'll try to do some joggers, some running, just more action-y type of things. People walking from the side, carrying a fishing pole or something. Stuff that I'm going to be, I'm going to need in the future. You know, maybe more kids and stuff, little kids, people sitting. I think I, I just need to find... I need to really go and just search for what I'm looking for instead of using some random uh, photos. But this was this was a good start, I think, a really good start to to playing around with the idea of these figures. I really like what's happening here, so I'm definitely going to keep these up. Um, so anyway, guys, I totally forgot to mention, but uh, if you're anybody's interested, whoever's watching, you can check out my website, shaverfineart.com. Got some drawings on there, of course. Watercolor paintings, just like what you saw. And uh, always adding more watercolor paintings every few days, so definitely be sure to check it out so you don't miss anything. I also have a support page. You can donate to me on PayPal, Venmo, if you like what I do, want to keep me going. I have a Patreon page, a Bandcamp where I make music. Uh, you can also join as a member here on YouTube. So next to the subscribe button underneath all my videos or on my channel page, there's a little join button. You click that and it'll tell you what you get and how much it costs. It's $1.99 per month. And if you want to do it for like two months and then cancel, you can't. If you don't do it for one month and cancel or five months and then cancel, you know. It basically just helps me keep going. It supports the channel, supports these video videos. And also the people that are members either of my Patreon or my YouTube channel on here on YouTube, you get access to extra reference photos from my plein air adventures. So other landscape photos um, that I take while I'm out doing the plein air videos. So for those that are interested in landscapes and stuff, um, you know, I may end up putting extra photos, like the photos of people that I have here, I may end up putting those up. Just extra kind of photos and stuff for your own art, your own study, your own learning. Um, but I may expand that a little bit in the future, like what I'm, what I put out there. But for now, that's what it is. And uh, thanks to everybody for that supports me that way. Really appreciate it. 
But uh, thank you guys for watching. It's been fun. I hope you guys have a good evening. People around a picnic table? Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a good idea too. Um, I'm going to write that down so I don't forget it because that's a good one. Uh, I got a lot on this list. I'm going to need a new sheet of paper. Picnic table people. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank you, thank you for that, uh, Deborah. Really appreciate it. But uh, if you tuned in halfway or something, definitely, definitely go back watch the replay of this. A lot of cool stuff happened in the beginning in here, so it was a lot of fun. But uh, anyway, guys, I'm gonna get off here and uh, eat some dinner and all that. So I will see you guys next week. Taking the weekend off, gonna do my own plein air, all that kind of stuff. So I'll see you guys next week. So uh, anyway, take care of yourself, guys. Be safe and uh, have fun painting, drawing, practice, have some fun.